Hello everyone, thanks for joining today's webinar. You're in for a real treat. We're going to be starting very soon, so get comfy. And can everyone ensure that your microphone is muted? I'm Rosa, the Communications Officer for Songs for Change and Yep Europe, and I'll be taking care of all technical issues and moderating the questions today. So if you want to ask a question, you can use the Q&A feature, which is at the bottom of your screen. And our team are going to moderate the questions and we're going to select some of the most relevant ones to address during the end of the session. We encourage everyone to participate, whether you're a beginner or an experienced musician. So don't be shy. There's no such thing as a silly question. And probably when you ask a question, there's probably someone else who is really happy that you asked it. So yeah, we're going to start in a moment. So get ready. A warm welcome also to all of you from me uh, on today's webinar on song recording, DIY tips and tricks. And this is the third webinar of our song creation series, and we are excited to have you all with us today. My name is Lynn Radke. I'm the project manager for Songs for Rights, and most of you know me already from the previous webinars, where we learned interesting and practical insights about songwriting and song composing. And I'm thrilled to have all of you with us today. Um, today, we will dive into the world of music recording, and we will explore various tips and tricks that you can use to create high quality recordings right from your own home. Um, and whether you're a singer, songwriter, rapper, or producer, these tips will hopefully help you to take your music to the next level. Um, I'm joined today by my colleague, Jochen Schell, who will introduce himself in a minute. And we are both thrilled to have Christian Wagner from the Musiklabor as part of Die Weiße Rose in Berlin, Germany, as our guest speaker for today. Um, so welcome. Um, but before we are starting, I would like to give you a little overview so that you know what you can expect in today's webinar. After a short introduction, Christian will give us his input on song recording, which will be followed by a Q&A session where, we'll, where we will address your questions. So now I will hand over to Jochen to introduce himself, and then we will get started with Christian's input. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Lynn. Um, I'm Jochen Schell, as uh, Lynn mentioned already, I'm the director and founder of uh, Songs for Rights. Um, Songs for Change, which is um, the context of this webinar, is a spin-off project of uh, Songs for Rights, and um, we are very excited uh, to um, have you all with us today, and especially excited about our guest speaker, uh, Christian Wagner, and I'd like to um, introduce him uh, before I give him the mic. Um, uh, Christian um, is the head of the studio, the sound studio uh, Musik Labor Weiße Rose. Um, Lynn already mentioned it, it's here in Berlin. And um, Christian has a very diverse background. He uh, used to be a drummer in a punk band in the early 90s, um, and he did his first recordings uh, then. And in the late 90s, he started also uh, rapping and writing lyrics, uh, making music and recording uh, his own songs. In um, 2001, he became a, a sound engineer and sound designer. And um, in 2003, released his own records. He continued his experience with uh, live performance and recording. And um, in 2008, he also became a social worker and a street worker and has been uh, involved in a wide range of cultural projects involving music and um, also um, acts as a workshop tutor. So as you can see, um, a very wide uh, uh, and uh, solid um, expertise in the field of music. And uh, Christian, again, thank you so much for being with us today. And I give you the mic um, to uh, give us an introduction here into, um, yes, uh, song recording. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Um, uh, yes, um, I'm one of the heads in the Weiße Rose. Uh, I have to say I have a, another colleague, Daniel Martins, and we do this together. It's a kind of a learning studio here where you can record. Uh, also, you can record for free if you know what you want to record, we always say. It's a cultural center. It's, a, a, it's specially focused on, on uh, music and um, 
uh, also a performance. We have a live section and a big, uh, big uh, hall where you where you where concert take place. For example, every Wednesday, and we do the recordings for those who ask to record in our two rooms. In the background, you see a little bit our old consoles. Today, I want you maybe uh, give a little introduction in a um, in a way where you can uh, start to record yourself uh, more proper at home. I don't know. Some of you maybe ha a little, have a little bit experience. Some of the those who are watching this uh, and, and recording themselves, some maybe not. It doesn't matter which level. And so I would start with my presentation. It's about the recording. And uh, you see in the past times, a lot of people take uh, or the most most recordings, uh, which uh, which are uh, in the in the professional uh, area. It, it was uh, recorded on tape machines with an analog mixer. The analog mixer is um, this thing, what we got here in the background. Uh, it's a little bit replaced by something what's called DHW DAW. And uh, this is a, a music program where you can record yourself, vocals, and where you can do... Uh, For example, also MIDI recording. Later on, I uh, will explain something about MIDI recording and what you need for it. Some some are uh, a little bit annoying about that, but uh, you you need a laptop and maybe a smartphone nowadays. Good thing is that everybody can record at home uh, themselves and. Uh, um, the the ideas it's it's more focused on the ideas nowadays than it was before, and everybody got the possibility to record something, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, options you have, so that sometimes you have to decline your options not to be confused with recording itself. So um, yeah, what you need, um, I recommend. Uh, If, if you um, buy a an, an laptop, it's, you have to buy a laptop PC or Mac. It's minimum 8 GB of RAM and uh, minimum Intel Core i5 processor, uh, Windows with uh, Windows version 10 or higher. Uh, it, it sounds heavy to buy that because it's often expensive, but I really recommend to look after, for example, refurbished products. You can buy it in the internet from from special sites, or there are some stores in your town maybe, which buy or sell refurbished uh, laptops and also other audio devices. The this center of it of of uh, my last presentation, what I sent it to Lynn was the door, and door is who the is DAW. Yeah, DAW is um, DHW. It, it means dig Digital Audio Workstation. And uh, this is uh, kind of a heart of the modern uh, studio in a way, because everybody uh, who records with laptops or uh, makes digital recordings needs an, at first a DAW. And Yeah, maybe you ask why is it possible, how is it possible to take your microphone into the laptop? Uh, therefore, you need uh, an audio interface. Uh, what, what an audio interface uh, is that I explain next, but this is just a little uh, samba to all doors. All doors can record and play audio signals, um, voice and real instruments. That means, um, yeah, when, when you when you uh, record something in, into an audio interface, which I explain next, you can uh, you you see it later on 
in this uh, in this kind of uh, in this kind of view. And then it's another thing what what you maybe have have seen before, and it's this kind of these are MIDI notes. These two I explain, and yeah, all doors can also record and play virtual instruments and MIDI notes, and you can play this in in your door with uh with in your or in your music program with an um with uh, third-party plugins and uh, virtual instruments that can be audio effects, like, for example, Reverb, Reverb and um, um, Delay, for example, or can be also uh, compressors and uh, equalizers, but it also can be... Uh, um, virtual instruments like synthesizers or virtual guitars or virtual basses, everything is possible in the VST uh, world. And the good thing is you can implement it in every kind of door. There are a lot of different doors and you can uh, find a lot of free stuff uh, in the internet from this. Yeah. I, I show you now I don't know if you can watch this. Maybe I can go out a little bit. You, you yeah, no, can watch it's bigger. This yes, no bigger. Can see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is, for example, an uh, audio interface which most of beginners use, and it's a um, focus right interface. Uh, I. Uh, you can also buy native instruments or uh, don't know. There's a lot of different interfaces in this price area and it's about 100, 100 euro, for example. And there you can put your microphone. And for, for that, you have to, for example, like kind of these microphones. These are a lot of people know from live, mm -hmm. for example. And um, you can put your headphones into it and in the back you see you can put some speakers into it i show you now um in the in the presentation again that this is the the normal way an audio interface functions normally you have a laptop and connect it via usb or usb c but you always take uh for example stereo stereo symmetrical jack for for your speakers and uh here you can put your microphone or for example a guitar you can mm -hmm. for example uh record a guitar uh, in that way then then it's um then it's uh the the, the sig signal uh, is called the eye signal or you can uh you can um record your guitar as well via a microphone and an amplifier or for example just a microphone and a um acoustic guitar for example with microphones you can everything what what is hearable without electric connections and uh yeah for for uh, e, e guitar or um e bass for example it's much more electric uh, electric bass it's it's uh it's it's sometimes affordable uh, to to record it at home with um with the eye signal you can put also some uh, uh midi devices for example or midi keyboard or usb keyboard these keyboards are for playing for example piano you have to imagine this audio interface as a kind of a door between between the digital and uh, analog real world. It's kind of a, yeah, interface, it means, yeah, it speaks for itself. Okay, I just want to say something about audio interface of your choice. Uh, it, it depends a little bit on what, which, what, what, what is your, what is your needs. For example, if you, if you uh, are solo artist, just want to uh, record vocals, speech or you want to do songwriting you uh you need just for example one or two inputs maybe but if you want to do band recording you need more inputs for example to record a drum set 
Yeah, then maybe you need five, six, eight, or ten inputs for just recording a drum set because it depends also how uh, detailed you want to record your drum set. But uh, yeah, that's uh, I just want to say that the interface of your choice uh, orientates uh, a little bit for uh, on your needs, what you need for your mu music group or for your for your uh, project, what what you want. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Next, I want to show you is um, something about microphones. I go to the next uh, slide for it, and yeah, you you have uh, I I showed you before the the uh, Shure SM eight hundred fifty microphone Shure uh, fifty eight. It's a uh, kind of a classic microphone for singing and performing live. Uh, it's a, a dynamic microphone. Dynamic microphones often like this one is also a dynamic microphone. It's a little bit expensive, but uh, I uh, really like it because also when you have not a really good room and good conditions at home, you can use dynamic microphones because uh, they're not uh, because they are not so sensitive. They sometimes uh, are good for your performance. Uh, often it it's more the performance what you give into the microphone okay it depends when you really uh, have a transparent voice and really want to go uh, in detail then maybe you need a condenser microphone uh but this this is also depending on the condition in your room so uh, if you if you have a condenser microphone really expensive and sensitive and you have a shitty sounding room it sounds um, muddy or totally reflective it's small but reflective and the walls are really noisy um i cannot describe really what what's about but uh, the reflections are really uh, disturbing the sound of the recording it's not dry as it sounds now now it's uh, when i talk here inside okay i'm is in a studio room it's made for recordings so it's more not reflective and the walls are prepared for that. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, a condenser mic is then, uh, it's more sensitive. It needs phantom power. And phantom power is a little knob which is connected to a gain amplifier uh, and it gives your uh, uh, microphone the needed power for yeah um to uh to really that you can hear something otherwise you uh, it wouldn't function this is just for condenser mics dynamic mi microphones uh, dynamic microphones don't need uh, phantom power and for a condenser mic you also need uh, a spider and this one it's a pop screen i have prepared here something this is for example a condenser microphone i don't know if you can see it in the yeah, uh, yeah, and, and this one is a pop screen because when you have a really um, sensitive mic, pfft, when you do plosives like that or something, it really uh, disturbing the um, rec the record. But uh, yeah, you can handle all the records you can handle in the mix afterwards. But the best thing is to record it proper for or record it good from the beginning on mm -hmm. it's one of the golden rules that you record the best you're recording the best is uh the the final uh result yeah yeah these are the the, the uh, differences between the microphones let me explain for example before i show it in logic um how how uh a, a door in general will works it's it's like um for example when you see this volume knob here it's here it's the, it's the uh, volume fader for every uh, track you have these different tracks for example every every um channel goes to the master channel and on the master channel there's the main volume takes place for all the channels are mixed onto the master channel. What all doors, 
also have it's this panning knob. It's about left or right. Uh, the record knob, it's about, yeah, record, sharp or not. And mute and solo button. Mute means to uh, make this uh, to, to uh, make, make it silent, the channel. And solo means to just uh, listen to the uh, channel solo. Yeah. This is the important things. And here you can see that you can implement these FX tracks. There you can also implement uh, the uh, VST instruments, for example, or VST. VST are, is just a format. Uh, there is two different formats. is AU and VST. Here you can see some VSTs. For example, um, these are uh, compressors and... They, they also can be uh, like uh, synthesizers or something you can play. Mm -hmm. I, I can show later on in, in this uh, small logic part. Before we start with the uh, uh, go in depth, which kind of doors uh, there are out there? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's uh, I, I will show you uh, a difference between two different uh, tracks on a on a door and the one track is midi and the other one is audio audio is everything i record it's like for example what what i uh, talking now it's recorded on your zoom in audio and you can see it here these audio files look like this in your door and there is another format which is often uh, to, uh, the, the, the talking about, uh, which, which often people talking about when it's about uh, music recording and it's MIDI. And uh, the best is to explain it uh, in, in that way that it doesn't sound itself. It, it's, not, uh, it's not a real audio signal. It's more like a uh, calculation of the pitch and the tone length and uh, the dynamics, how loud one sound is. So, for example, you can record the piano and afterwards you can switch your MIDI instrument to a bass line or something. And this is possible. Also, you can, these little chests here are how long is a, how long is a note, how, st how strong is a note played and in which uh, range of notes is, is, is that note played. And you can switch length, length uh, and tone. That's what I can show you later on in this uh, little logic section. Maybe it's then clearer. Otherwise, I know it's really complicated to understand what MIDI exactly is, but you have to try it out in your own choice of door, if you got one. So the next um, is about which door is then the 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 uh, good choice for me, because there are so many outside. This is really confusing for beginners. I think uh, they <coughs> often take then the door with uh, with what what a friend uh, has chosen, and that's totally okay. You can try everything. Try try out for yourself what you like the most. That's what I did before. I worked with a lot of different stuff. I worked uh, a long time with uh, lo I learned Logic uh, Pro uh, when it was the times past, and I uh, learned a little bit Pro Tools. I learned Cubase. These are the classic DAWs standards what you can f uh, often find in every studio. But there is a lot of new DAWs outside. You you can see it good in your uh... yep perfect. Okay, a uh, uh, lot of new doors, for example, uh, I, I did a little uh, co collection of some which I find interesting. There are a lot more than just this. These are all, um, uh, these are all um, apps, all programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if every, everybody gets my point of mm -hmm. what is a door. Uh, and 
for example, waveform is a uh, newer one's interesting. Audacity, I think everybody knows it maybe from school nowadays, often used in school context because it's a free door. For me, it's sometimes a little bit complicated to start with it. So I can recommend it, but I didn't really use it so often. And yeah, GarageBand is on every, the, the, the advantage of is, it is you can find it on every iPad or iOS. You can have it for free. That's good. Mm -hmm. But uh, disadvantage in this is just for Mac users. It's not, everybody is not uh, using for Mac. Uh, for, for that, for example, something like this one here, Cakewalk is interesting or maybe Reaper. It says it's costed 60 euros, but uh, it's um, in a way it's free. You have just to, to check a box in the beginning uh, that you try it again and you can try it as long as you want for mm. free. Uh, it's just a 60 euro is not much for a really good functional program. And there you can use and implement also every VST instruments. You can uh, take For example, a piano, which you find in internet, free VST instrument, a piano and play it in Reaper, for example. Mm -hmm. Then with a with a um, MIDI MIDI controller or a MIDI keyboard, like I showed you in the in the interface section. Yeah, and Studio One Soundtrap is yeah, Studio One is the next year's uh, a lot of people use that. It it got also some specialties. For example, you can take your whole session in the mix uh when when you record an ep you can take the whole session in one mix and when you change one of those files it changes in the master session i don't know maybe it's too uh, complicated to mm. to uh yeah sorry it was too long um and then uh another one is soundtrap you can uh, use it in uh via your your browser it's a browser based app okay uh, disadvantage is you have to use it in the internet you can download it but uh, advantage is you can also uh, make music with uh, people in the internet it's the same like there's a lot of uh, for example there's a door or not a door it's more uh an app um, where you can make music together in a virtual room. It's uh, I didn't uh, write it down here, but it's Jamulus. I don't know if you heard about it. There, you, It's kind of a virtual rehearsal room. You can jam uh, all around the, the globe with people. Yeah, you have maybe- Yeah, that's have very cool. We have actually our webinar four is um, about this very thing, the um, uh, collaborative online music making. And we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about these uh, tools. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, then I don't have to go in detail right now, but yeah, it's good to mention it because it's mm. really funny. Uh, yeah, especially during times we could not uh, go out so much. We used it a lot to make session with each mm. other and yeah, make, make music session. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, then there are two special, uh, uh, which I find a, a little bit special doors because they have two different uh, platforms. You see it a little bit. Yeah, you have this window with these little boxes here in, in uh, Ableton Live. And you have this window, which functions as a no normal door. For a lot of people, it's really complicated. Same uh, works Bitwig. And for example, Logic got also these loop-based stuff inside now. Yeah, it's uh, it's these are good. For example, Ableton Live uh, is really often used uh, on stage, live on stage. That's why it's the name Ableton Live, because you can do so many really fancy stuff and creative stuff in real time. That uh, yeah, I do really like this app as well. But uh, it's not like I cannot recommend one of these. So every uh, door got its special and advantage. And it's more, yeah, you have to try it out. And maybe you start with something what, uh, what you can have in your environment. For example, mm -hmm. you, have an, you have an iPhone or you have something. You have, an, uh, you have a tablet or you have a PC. You just try something out. Uh, recording is, uh, is possible with every. Mm -hmm. great yeah 
Then there are some da doors, uh, groove, uh, more groove production based. The role model for it, it's more the Akai MPC. It's founded in the 80s. Nearly every hip hop beat is kind of based on this uh, MPC. And uh, yeah, that's more uh, a groove box. These are more groove boxes. Now I show you something in Logic, uh, how it works with um, recording some audio. Uh, I, I Logic take Lo is... Logic Pro X. It's a program which you can just buy for for Mac. Early in earlier times, it was also a PC PC based uh, program, but uh, yeah, now it's just working on Apple but you have thousands of different other DAWs which can do exactly the same. Uh, I will come later on to it. Yeah, I want to show you now some, um, uh, a little bit how it works when you when you actually set up your DAW the first time or when you use the, your DAW the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, th therefore I have to share the, um, my, uh, desktop yeah we can see it mm -hmm. you can see it now yes, and yeah. you, you see all also the, the the card here yeah where you can uh change stuff okay uh for example now it said here's zoom audio device this is my um uh, audio source for now sometimes you uh, when when you have for example a focus right interface or a native instruments interface or something for beginners you have to switch over here and then um, normally your audio works like this that you have an input here yeah I I try to uh, to record my input again with this and take the symphony I try. I don't know if it works, but I try. Now you can see my voice comes over here. You can hear my voice. Then I record. Hear something. Yeah. My preferences are, for example, here. Uh, what I showed you before, this is my channel. And there I record uh, something. I record this. Yeah. I, I can, so I choose audio recording, but I can also uh, record um, software instruments. For example, I take, uh, let, let's say, um, I take, uh, yeah, let, let's take this vintage uh, clavier chord. I take one. Um, I take one track with this and you can see, okay, it's the implementation of a clavier chord. Yeah, I, you can play it via music. You can, can hear that? Yeah, can you hear mm -hmm. that? Yes. Okay, uh, and then you can record this, you can record as MIDI notes, for example. This, cl this clavier chord is maybe inside, uh, or this is one of the Logic internal uh, um, devices or internal instruments, but you can also take free, for example, a free piano VST instrument. You just have to, uh, to uh, recognize it from uh, your program, recognize it automatically when you load it on your, on your uh, laptop. And uh, when you play this, it records. Yeah, just kidding. But uh, you <laughs> you can see it um, here now. You can see mm -hmm. that I recorded MIDI notes. Yes, these are you know. And uh, yeah, I, I find the, the uh, it, it was not in the way organized. I can. Oh, you can change it. Yeah. I, I can change it. And I can change, for example, also the velocity curve. So how how uh 
lauter das. That's what I mean before with uh, these are MIDI notes. And I can change the long. And uh, not not enough. Uh, you can also change it to a totally different instrument, for example, to a synthesizer. Now I have an H synthesizer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are the same notes. And that's what uh, is going on with MIDI. You can just use it for totally different. Okay, a little bit annoying tune, but <laughs> yeah, you can you can do everything uh, out of it. You can also have, for example, MIDI notes from a famous song. You want to uh, uh, make a remix out of it and take it mm -hmm. and switch it to uh, different instruments and connect it okay. to different instruments. Yeah, that's maybe the really basic. MIDI is something which not sounds itself. Right. So it's really about playing around with this and spending time with this. Uh, of course, it's it's mm -hmm. about uh, that. Like like if you learn drums, for example, you have to play around with uh, how it works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure. Like like playing an instrument. It was the okay. same for me when I uh, first time. Uh, Connected to mu musical music music apps, I just played playing around, and nowadays it's the same. I just playing around with uh, stuff I like, and yeah, I spend hours in it to recognize how it's going on. And what's a really good tip on this uh, thing is really if you if you started to uh, work with something, uh, maybe a door, which is uh, what's uh, uh, gettable in your environment and what you have now at home. Um, and you don't know how to go further or you have this problem and that problem, watch some tutorials and try it out. Try it out for yourself. Don't just watch tutorials, more uh, watch and then try it out and mm. uh, practice. That's, that's uh, yeah, for, for now, I think it's enough to, to look a little bit in, in DH, DHW. Mm -hmm. like logic. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't talk so much to you um which headphones you, you can have. Headphones is this one is more an open headphone, and there are more closed headphones like this or that. And the difference is uh just when, when you record, for example, audio, then uh, sometimes you record with music on your ears. And when it's too near at the microphone and it's not closed like this one, uh, then you can hear it. the signal mm. you can hear on the record. That's the uh, main uh, difference. This one you maybe take more for mixing, but for mixing you can see in the background these uh, studio monitors, for example. Uh, these are special speakers for recording uh, and um, mixing audio. It's there. This these, these uh, small brown ones. There are uh, special, but uh, we have more in in this corner. You can see uh, some of them. There's a lot of different uh, stuff. Could you maybe um, tell all of us in the audience as well the main ten tips you would suggest for everyone? Okay, yeah, I, I, I have prepared some uh, tips. Um, yes. uh, my, 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 my 10 Chris tips are uh, first, think first, buy second. This is uh, before you buy equipment, think about which features re your recording system requires to fulfill your personal needs. That what I talked uh, before in the beginning, it's uh, about, yeah, what, what kind of... Um, what kind of uh, audio interface, what kind of laptop, what kind of stuff you have in your environment, what you need really, what what do you need really for your uh, kind of things you want to do? Because mm -hmm. you can spend a lot of money if you don't think about before what, what you are doing. Maybe you spend too much money for something you don't really need. Your wardrobe, uh, tip two, your wardrobe is an acoustic element, means yes, uh, in home recording situations, it can really be helpful 
when you put, for example, you have a microphone like this, it's not so um, sensitive, but you you can hear me now like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when you have a microphone like this, maybe it helps when your walls are reflective to uh, uh, place your microphone in front of your wardrobe because this uh, um, the the uh, your clothes abs absorb a little bit the the reflections. Mm -hmm. So the the um, waveform comes into the uh, wardrobe and not to the not so much to the walls. That's mm. something I tried out and it works really. Yeah. Otherwise, you can buy acoustic elements. You, it's it's uh, science for itself to make a room sound like, yeah. That that is really useful useful for studio recording. Some some of the people I know to, uh, take an old mattress and put it when when the room is too big, put it in the middle and hang it down in the middle of your room, and yeah, you can do a lot of stuff. Leave headroom, yeah, uh, that's what I uh, uh, said when you when you make your pegel check. Yeah, when you that's what that was a mistake I often did earlier when I start to record is uh, your your pegel should not be as uh, as loud as exactly zero dB, not to the maximum. It's better when it is a little bit uh, not so loud. So pegel, you mean the 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 uh, uh, level of volume, back, right? Yeah. 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 Maybe I go back to my. Uh, can you see? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the level of your input, volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the level of the volume. The input from this comes mm -hmm. from your from your interface. You have to uh, to leave this one here, normally at zero. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is just a, a situation where it's mixed. But when you record, you have to do this. Leave this here zero. And the entrance signal shouldn't go over uh, minus 18 or minus 12 dB. Mm -hmm. So you have a good microphone sound, uh, but not too noisy or clipping. And that's when it clips, uh, it sounds not good. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't sound good. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Headroom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the never clipping in the uh, red area means that. Tip four, uh, why can't I hear anything? Uh, that, that, that's, for example, if you can't hear anything, you have, uh, that's often, really often the, the case. It's like bef before you have always technical issues. You uh, have to go step by step through your recording chain or through your chain to solve the problem. So if you're using, for example, condenser microphone, this one here, is a condenser microphone. Uh, it, it could it could uh, re, uh, the, the the problem could be that you don't put a forty eight voltage mm. on or something. Yeah. Um, tip five: Try to record as good quality as possible. Um, if you got nothing like that, like the pop screen. You, you can uh, sing a little bit beneath your microphone, for example, like this, because mm -hmm. when you sing directly in these uh, kind of uh, sensitive devices, it's, uh, yeah, it often uh, pops and makes plosives. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, there is an extra tip. Yeah, I, I told you uh, already these dynamic microphones uh, have their speciality. Uh, yeah, disadvantage is it's also uh, more than 300 euro, this microphone. It's not uh, totally cheap or something, but this works really good in difficult rooms. Uh, and a lot of uh, uh, people who make podcast content or, or stuff use, use that microphone. And... Um, for example, uh, people uh, like uh, their their records like like um, 
ACDC, Michael Jackson, they all recorded with this microphone. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not like uh, an, uh, uh, just for a home recording situation. It's, 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 it has a really good dynamic range. Yes. Um, there was an, it's an extra tip. Um, your results are always as strong as the weakest track in the chain. That means uh, if you have a bad sounding vocal or instrument track or some tracks are missing, uh, the the recording can just be good sounding as the, the uh, quality depends on every single piece of device. Yeah. Get your shit done. Get your shit done. Yeah, that means uh, you have to uh, finish your music, uh, uh, set set time periods for the different uh, phases, and yeah, it's it's always good to have uh, okay to have targets, targets, so, mm -hmm. yeah, targets like yeah, okay, uh, today I want to mix these vocal verse or stuff like this, because otherwise you never finish your music i every every musician knows their problem okay uh tip seven uh, make decisions uh yeah limit your options make decisions for not going belly up in the pool of million options for example if you uh, record a lot of takes uh, make your choice for the best takes uh, directly after recording mm -hmm. you uh, yeah sometimes it's really confusing when you have too many Uh, tracks open and you don't know okay shall i take this or that one or that one if you de de decrease or uh, de decline your options uh in between for example is uh, i i uh, uh, have a friend who is always when he records something with midi he puts it into audio he transfers it into audio and it's fixed it's not uh, any more replaceable or something like that Yeah, if you decline your options, or sometimes it helps you to finish something. List, uh, tip eight, listen to uh, references. Uh, that means mixing. Think about how to want your music sound and uh, listen to reference songs. Pick a piece of music that you like and uh, try to, uh, yeah, what, what, where you really like the sound, for example, and try to reach that uh, sound in your own mix yeah for example you like a piece of rock music uh, and it sounds crispy or something and you want to have the same mix listen to that in between to have a reference what you are doing in the mix because sometimes it's like you make your mix and you think okay it sounds not there's not enough ba bass and uh, but in the end you find out okay it was way too much bass for example that's always good uh, to to bounce your music to put it out of your uh, dhw and uh, listen uh, in another environment at mm -hmm. home or in, in in cars or yeah different environments or on usb speaker or something just to listen and yeah to have an overview about your results instead of always sitting in the same place and listen hours of hours it's better to make 15 minutes of mixing and then make a pause of 10 minutes to get your ears fresh again yeah i i called uh, the next tip 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 nine proof is the part proof is in the pudding um it means uh, try to experiment with recording and mixing situations distances and mixing tools and equipment in general to find your own style and trademark it's all about practice and try it out it's uh, just you find out for yourself what's the best possibility if you try it out tip 10 if you feel lost try to find back to the catching point that's something i spin it in my head i don't know if uh, if 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 it's helpful for somebody but it's about um Sometimes you might feel creatively blocked sometimes or uh, you're in the mood to give up, to try to remember. Then uh, maybe you can try to remember what it was that's, that catches you uh, to start 
to make music at all. Maybe you try to recreate that situation. Uh, yeah, don't pressure yourself. Music is making, music making is having fun. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you very much uh, for this interesting and informative presentation, Christian. I myself learned a lot of new insights today, and I'm sure that the audience agrees as the comments are shown today. And I think all of us will benefit from it uh, to pursue uh, also our own music projects. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, during your presentation, we received a lot of questions from the audience and kindly Rosa did bundle some of them so that we can address the most asked questions today and in case your question will not be mentioned today uh, feel free to reach out to us on social media or via mail and we are happy to give you further information then. Um, despite this, I also wanted to remind you all about the Song Creation Handbook, the Songs for Change Toolkit and the video tutorials that accompany this webinar series and especially chapter three of the handbook contains written material that complements the topic we covered today. Um, you can download the material online on our website, but you can also find the link in the chat box as well. So, all right, um, I think let's get started with a Q&A session and hear all your questions. Jochen, do you want to start? Yes, I have a first question here from John in the Netherlands. Um, it's about uh, recording outside of a studio. So if, you, if you're in a, a common room, um, what should be taken into account uh, to, to improve and optimize the, um, the sound? So you, you mentioned uh, this before, but uh, very often, um, I mean, especially for people who are not uh, uh, experienced, um, how do you know that the room you're in is a good room to record you know um what should be in the room what should not be in the room uh also things like ceilings high ceilings low ceilings walls these kind of things what what would be your recommendations yeah it's it's it, it's like for, for example when you have a room um which which have uh, reflective walls you always when you check it like this you can uh, hear before and what's really good uh, is maybe to place the microphone more in the middle and uh, to check out on which place your microphone don't sound so uh, so so much reverby and um, yeah you have uh, different possibilities to uh, get rid of background noise there are also um, plugins for it when you want to have a proper record it's not often just the room it's also the microphone i told you before it's uh maybe if you take an uh, condense uh, a dynamic mic or this dynamic mic like this um the, the the room noise outside wouldn't be so much in uh, the focus but uh, if you want to take this microphone or kind of these microphones, these uh, condenser microphones, you you um, for for example uh, put put this in front of a wardrobe. Mm -hmm. is, uh, is a possibility. Then there exist some solutions like little small cabins, but it's uh, yeah uh, expensive also in a way. Um, yeah. I can re recommend the microphone solution and I can maybe you have also a there, there, there's possibilities like a screen uh, uh, around you. It, uh, you cannot say this uh, in general, but you have also the possibility to get rid of the noises in the mix afterwards. Mm. But the best thing is just yeah to have a smaller room, a smaller room with, with uh, not so reflective walls and maybe you can install some stuff like uh, yeah, mattresses or something. You search a small cabin and put some mattresses in. And yeah, so Perfect. Uh, when, when, it, when it doesn't sound uh, boomy or uh, really noisy or reverby, you will hear it. Uh, then you have a dry, more dry signal. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
Welcome. We have another question from Anonymous from Germany. Um, so the question is, how can you in the editing get rid of background noise from a recording which is not of good quality? Yeah. Yeah, that's um, not as not not so simple when when you have uh, when you have a, a bad recording it's often um not not so easy to get rid of there are some ex uh, there are some plugins some effects you can uh, take a noise reduction plugins there is something from isotope rx or from waves that is clarity box and uh, there's another company is from Clef Grant is uh, Brucify is the name. And um, yeah, you can also uh, gate gate the signal. Uh, that, that means uh, you, you uh, use a noise gate where you can set the level. What uh, the, the background sound is like also like a door, which is open just when you speak loud in the microphone and the rest is get rid of. But often it's also good to edit it by hand, because then it's not so complicated that you find the point where the where the record is to end and just the background noise. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. Right. I cannot go really in detail. It, 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 but but the usual doors don't have an option uh, 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 to to get rid of this. It's it you would need additional plugins. So, some some uh, some some doors have have the options, and then mm. maybe you have to uh, watch a tutorial about to get, to to trick it with this uh, mm. to, to get to get rid of the uh, noise in, in this special door. Yeah. I cannot say in general which one yeah. is the, the master solution. There's no master solution for. I this. have another question here from uh, Isabel in Belgium. Um, it's not so much about the sound quality, but about um, speed. So the tempo. So she says, um, "What is what if the guitar and the drums or other parts like vocal or keys um, are not 100% in the same tempo? Can you easily correct this in the editing?" um yeah you mean um let's say I, I guess what she means is here if you have um the keyboard um you record it but it's not in the same tempo 100 percent. then for example the drum so can you slow it slow it down or can you speed it up i guess this uh, is what the, she means the thing is um a tempo depends also um till now <laughs> on the human uh reaction on for example keyboards but uh you you mean for example an appreciator is uh 80 80 bpm and the uh and the the tempo of the drum is 85 bpm or something mm -hmm. yeah, or it's it's a complicated question because tempo is yeah uh, you can get rid of it uh for example there's a good example when you record a band for example and the the musicians don't play in time really mm -hmm. so you can edit it in afterwards mm -hmm. what helps is for example to use a click and if you don't want to use a click there are really good reasons for it to not using a click cause the more lively feeling when you don't use the click it uh, depends on practicing you have to practice to play together as often as possible and yeah if there are some tempo issues like you mean for example midi time code or time code mm -hmm. uh, tempo difficulties this is another question well i guess what she means is here if you ever uh, recorded the keyboard let's say for example or the guitar and you have it on one track can you slow the track down or speed it up? Uh, you you, you can do you can do that. Uh, it depends when you, for example, you you have MIDI notes. It's much more easy to speed it up or slow it down. But in the modern the uh, in the modern apps, there are always possibilities to time flex your right. music. For example, in Ableton Live, it's really good soluted because there is. 
a possibility to um, to have warping points and then you can uh, switch tempo during a fixed audio, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Lynn, you have Go to the next questions. question. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Karen from Slovakia is asking how to make sure that everything is in harmony and one instrument is not louder than the other, that the singing voice is not too loud or quiet. So I think this is her example. Yeah. Yeah, uh, th there, there's something um, you can um, avoid. Uh, what, what uh, avoid in beforehand? Uh, if, if you uh, take your time to piggle check when you uh, do start the record, yeah, uh, you have to check the piggles of all your mix and uh, make test records before you record the whole songs. Then uh, you can rid of these uh, loud differences, but uh, yeah, I, I uh, for example, there's not a problem that I can fix because I can do it in the mix. It's uh, maybe a good sentence because uh, um, yeah, the volume balance of a record in detail is a question of mixing. Yeah. Uh, well, you have always volume differences and that's a question of mixing in a way. Mm -hmm. But when you play together in one room, then it's always not so good to record, for example, the vocals in the same room like you record the whole band when you record the band. Because then the, the vocals will be also on the microphones from the drums and you have not so many possibilities to edit it later on. Mm. So, it's often better to record the vocal tracks in a separate room. Yeah, that's actually answering um, the next question because it, the next question was also from um, from Slovakia. Uh, Gabriela, uh, can I record several things at once? For example, guitar, singing, drums, or should it be done uh, one by one or separately? Uh, so. I think you just answered that it's always yeah. better to separate um, the recordings. Yes. Mm. But uh, sometimes you want to have this live feeling. Yeah, a lot of bands who come here, for example, they play together, they perform together, they don't want to use click. And so we record, for example, at first one track with all of them. And we put the uh, the um, the amplifiers from from bass uh, or from the guitar, bass guitar, in another room and record it there with microphones, or you record it with DI and record it just the drum and the bass, which is signaled via DI in one room. And so you have just the drum vocals. And then afterwards, you can overdub with more guitar and uh, yeah, vocals. You can do a guide track, for example. Guide track is maybe also important. You have the singer with a, a, a microphone, maybe in another room, and all via headphones listen to the singer. And um, yeah, he, he sings along with them just for the feeling. And afterwards, uh, he, he records his. Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's always you have to think about which microphones uh, disturb themselves in one room when they record together. So if you want to have a live situation, there is a lot of uh, live uh, uh, possibilities to record live with good stereo uh, in, in one microphone or two microphones, yeah. Mm -hmm. There comes a more personal question from Veronica from Portugal. Um, and uh, the question is how to overcome nervousness while recording. Oh, Maybe man. you as a musician <laughs> as well, you can answer this. I think a, a little bit, uh, to be a little bit excited, <laughs> exciting or excited? I don't know. Excited, yeah. Excited is, is, is always good. Also like in life situations, too nervous, uh, too much ner nervousity is, is, is not so good. So you cannot do anything and cannot come out of yourself. But I don't know, it's, it's, it's to sing, uh, to warm up yourself, it's it's kind of helpful sometimes. Or 
do something like meditation or just do something that you feel comfortable in the room talk to each other don't be too don't don't take business too serious <laughs> just have fun make music that's what it's the, or we, we all start having fun in a room with some friends or alone i don't know <laughs> yeah. yeah having fun is a very good uh, recommendation i i find yeah, um, it's not like you cannot pu push the knob and say okay i have fun if you are nervous you are nervous <laughs> i know i can understand i was often nervous before live gigs or something i don't know yeah Great. I have another question here, but I think it was answered already. I I I, I read it anyway. Um, it's from Mateus in Portugal. Uh, yeah. Can you can you record a song with completely different types of microphones? For example, the vocals with an iPhone, yeah. guitar with condenser mic, uh, etc. Um, what are the risks? He asks. If you do complete different. Yeah, use different types of microphone also from the quality, I guess. Yeah, um, uh, and this question is like, okay, um, you you can, for example, record your vocals just with the uh, sound of your laptop uh, on the one day and uh, a guitar with a dynamic microphone like these or SM57, like, uh, yeah, the, the this is uh, another one I don't have here right now. Um, yeah it's it's possible it depends more on the on the setup and uh, what the song needs yeah you can also take one by one takes one take after another with just your laptop microphone you can do it if the laptop microphone works it works and it's a question of mixing but uh if you want or if you um do it like um i want to Put the best out of my equipment maybe you should take the best microphone for the best uh situation for example for guitar you take often dynamic microphones for uh yeah sensitive voice you take condenser microphones yeah and in the same time yeah it, it depends when you have a condenser microphone in a room where also playing loud drums it's nearly not possible to uh, record a good uh, vocal mic because mm. everything from the drums comes into the vocal mic. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's more or less, it's more or less always the question of setup, what you got and uh, do your own experience with it. Yeah, uh, you, I think you have uh, another one. Yes, I have yes. another question from Angeliki from Greece. How long does it take to record a song? Um, yeah, that totally depends on the song. If if you have a one minute punk rock song, uh, you or uh, just uh, one verse of rap, you uh, don't take so much time. It it's often like when you record uh, with more than one musician, or when you uh, record drums, for example, you need one day, maybe or six or seven hours to set up all the microphones and. Yeah, to to set up the uh, headphones everybody got. And yeah, the more people and uh, uh, instruments involved or live instruments involved, the more the longer it takes. When mm. you have, um, for example, a backing clip, a backing track, um, um, what's it called? Uh, playback. And you just record the vocals. It needs much less time, I think. Mm -hmm. And it depends how good is uh, how how good did you did the singer or or did did the musician practice performance? Yeah, how many takes you need? Yeah. All right, and uh, I have one last question, but again, I think you answered it already. It's about uh, the MIDI files. Um, it's a question from Ash in Italy. My friend often uses um, MIDI files as the yeah. base of their songs, and what are they exactly? And you showed us already yeah. uh, in the Logic um, yeah. program what they are. Yeah, so I think the, the best uh, sentence to explain it to uh, uh, so somebody who don't uh, tried it out with MIDI notes, it's just MIDI doesn't sound itself. It's not an, it's not an audio wave. It's, it's just an, 
uh, yeah, uh, length of the notes, the high of the notes, and it's just a kind of a protocol in the. It's in an information the about the sound, I guess. Yeah, yeah it's this, a information yeah. about the melody and the sound and the time mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. the melody. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a great explanation. Great. Uh, so, so these were the questions from the audience. Yes. Um, thank you so much, Christian. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Wow. This question was very great, and I'm happy for today's session. Um, it was very informative and helpful, and I learned a lot of new things. So, before we go, I want to remind you to check out the handbook, which contains the written material. Um, and the link can be found in the chat box. Um, once again, also, we want to thank you, Christian, uh, for sharing your knowledge and expertise with us today. Um, it is an honor to have you as our guest today. And um, finally, I also want to thank Jochen and Rosa uh, for co-hosting this webinar. And also, we appreciate Oh, we want to send our greetings and appreciation to the audience. Thank you for joining us today. Um, it was a pleasure and uh, we hope you're going to join us as well in the next webinar uh, called Joining Tunes for Change, where you will learn about uh, collaborative online music making. Um, so hopefully see you next time. And with this said, uh, we are saying thank you to all of you and wishing you a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.